I had this hotel room for a week. On the sixth day, I finished it. On the seventh day, I rested. And on the seventh day, I tried to write a letter to, to my secretary to tell her how I wanted this to be typed up. And I couldn't finish a sentence. Uh, it was gone. The muse was gone. I, I would start writing, and all of a sudden, I said, now what was I going to say? It, it was flowing for six days, and then it stopped. And so I think it's an inspiration that I can't just turn on and turn off either. Well, I understand you, you've been considering all kinds of numbers under the sun, and uh, probably the greatest kind of numbers, because it includes ev everything, uh, uh, is the surreal numbers. The name actually uh, came to me in the middle of the night. I have no idea. Uh, I have a, a vague re recollection that I saw at one point a French paper that talked about nombre sur ordino. I don't pronounce it well, but sort of sur ordinal numbers. I've never been able to track down that paper, and I don't know if I heard about it before or after I thought of the name surreal. But um, you'll see that it's a great name after you understand what surreal numbers are. And John Conway invented the concept, and he his first description of it was on all numbers, great and small. Not only big and small, but inside and everything. And so uh, people know what the real numbers are, uh, and I call them surreal because there are infinitely many surreal numbers between any two real numbers. No. I thought the numbers between all the other numbers already existed, so... Yes, that's what almost everybody thought except Conway. So I learned about it. I happened to be visiting Calgary in Canada at the same day that John Kahn was up there and we had lunch together and he had recently discovered this co this concept which we're going to describe. During our lunch he wrote out on a napkin all the rules of, of uh, definition of surreal numbers. I was enchanted by this idea. Of course I had lots of other stuff to do but I kept the napkin. I took it home with me. The basic idea you uh, have a new way to describe this all numbers. You build up all numbers starting from nothing and actually nothing is kind of the representation of zero. But then you can use zero to describe another number which turns out to be one. And you can use zero and one to, to make two other numbers, one of which is two and one of which is a half. And you can continue creating more and more numbers. It's something like the creation of a universe. Here we're creating a universe of numbers. But the numbers that you get are always, the denominator is always two or four or eight or sixteen or something that you don't get every, you don't ever get one third throughout the first part of this process but you keep on creating numbers until you go to infinity then a big bang occurs and all of a sudden you get all the real numbers the next day after that then you create infinity plus one and infinity minus one you also have one over infinity which is a number that's bigger than zero but it's uh, less than any positive real number. That's why I started calling them surreal, because there's a number like pi plus 1 over infinity. This is between pi and every real number that's greater than pi. And also, we keep on going and we keep on creating, so we, at some point we get a one half of infinity. And we get square root of infinity. And we get infinity to the infinity. All these numbers that we get, we can add, subtract, multiply, and divide them. So it goes way beyond any kind of numbers that people ever conceived of before. These sound like tiny slivers that we're dropping into gaps that we didn't even know were there. We got the tiny slivers and we also have the reciprocal of the one over a tiny sliver which is a, which is a gigantic thing larger than we've ever th people have ever thought of before. So that's why kind of we call them all numbers great and small. One night in the middle of the night I, I said hey I bet why don't I call them serial numbers but the, the main inspiration that I had was I said wait a minute this is so cool I think maybe I had to write a book for high school students that would teach them what surreal numbers are. There was a need for a book that shows how mathematical research is done and, and, and how you take some simple laws and, and create gigantic uh, uh, universes out, out of simple laws. And th the process of discovering is, is uh, something that's usually not taught in schools. You, you just are taught the facts, but, but you, don't, you don't get to see the thrill of, of, of developing these facts. I woke my wife up. We were, it, it, we were, it turned out we were on sabbatical year in, in Norway, and, and I, and, uh, well, maybe I didn't wake her up until the morning, but anyway, I had, I had the idea in the middle of the night and I couldn't go to sleep. 
um, I said, wait a minute, a book like this ought to be written. I was already years behind on, on books that I'd promised to write, uh, and, and I'm still not done writing. That was 50 years ago. But I told my wife, you know, Jill, I decided I have to write another book. But it's only going to take me a week. She said, well, you know, that's actually kind of a, a nice idea. Uh, uh, time in your life when you can do this. Here we are in sabbatical. And so we worked it out that, uh, that a few weeks later, I, I would rent my uh, hotel room in downtown Oslo and spend a week writing, writing this book. She would come visit me a couple times that week uh, because we always wondered what it would be like to have an affair in a hotel room. So uh, that, that was the plan and it actually worked out so marvelously. It was probably the greatest week in my life. I started out every morning having a big Norwegian breakfast. Uh, my hotel was very near where Ibsen used to live so I could get some of his vibes. At breakfast there were a group of 50 American students and I could listen to what they were saying because I had decided to write this book uh, in dialogue between, between two characters. Alice and Bill. Might as well show you the book Man. because here's the book <laughs> and you can see Alice and Bill here. My wife did illustrations. How two ex-students turned on to pure mathematics and found total happiness. If you look on the web you find out that, that there's a bimodal distribution of reader comments. There are th those who are looking for beautiful mathematics and those people are rating it at five. And then there are people who are looking for a novel and, and some cool sex scenes and things like this and they're rating it a zero and they're saying it's the stupidest thing I ever did and why would I, why would anybody uh, waste his time? So it's a kind of a litmus test as to, as to what you like. Oh, by the way, uh, A is Alice and B is Bill, but there's one line here which is, which is said by Conway. And I went and visited John Conway a few months later to, to, uh, to, to make sure that I could, uh, I could quote him. So in this particular part, he's, Conway says, rubbish, wait until you get to infinite sets. Alice says, what was that? Did you hear something? It sounded like thunder. Bill says, I'm afraid we'll be getting to the monsoon season pretty soon. So is that the only line for Conway? I've this seen is, multiple times. I believe it's the only line that Conway has in here. In the book, he's, he's the creator. And he's not only J.H. Conway, but he's J.H.W.H. Conway, uh, which is an allusion to the t Tetragrammaton, the, the Hebrew name for God. And the characters in the book discover two axioms on a stone tablet and also some markings on the stone tablet. A surreal number consists of two parts and, and you indicate it by brackets and a colon. You have a bracket and on the left of the, left of the colon you, you, you put some number and on the right uh, some set of numbers and on the right you put some set of numbers and then you create more numbers. So, so you start out with this with this number which is zero and then if you put zero on the left uh, you get a number which, co which is called one and if you put zero on the right you get a number which is called minus one and this stone that Alice and Bill find has these markings on it but they have to they have to decode what it means for, uh, for these markings to do even though I have hardly any plot in, in, in this book the fact that uh, as I do refer to nature and have a little story going on meant that I, I was watching everything in the world much more intensely. Not only was I listening to what these students said at breakfast, but I'm also seeing the, 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 the uh, colors, <laughs> the, the leaves on the trees, the, everything outside. There was more too, because every morning I was actually trying to create the theory myself. Conway had told me the thing and I, and I saved the napkin on which he wrote, uh, he wrote it down, but I lost it somehow in the next, in the next month. So I had to, uh, had to try to remember it. And then I had to try to remember how did he prove all these marvelous things that he had told me about during the lunch. And I, I purposely didn't plan that in advance, but every day I, I would work on it. And then the, the uh, mistakes that I would make, uh, I, the characters in my story would make those mistakes, and, and but but then eventually I you know I I, I got further and further and, and and was able to develop the theory. Had Conway not published it himself, and he just no no he had a, he had this report. All numbers, great and small, was his report, and then and then he was writing this book on numbers and games that came out a few years later. But uh, at that point, it was brand new. If you got so much pleasure from this form of writing, why don't you do it more often? Oh no, it's too it it's too scary. Uh, it, it, it's not sustainable. <laughs> I I think you, 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 these are moments that that are, come once in a lifetime. But but I think also there was it it was it wasn't just me. There was something. The ideas w were coming to me as if they were being dictated by by some muse. The last thing at night, I turn out the light. 
the next several sentences would flow into my head. I couldn't sleep, so I turn on the light. I would write down those sentences, but I did, they were coming so fast I only had time to write the first letter of every word. And so I jotted that down, turn out the light, go to sleep. The next morning I can figure out what I was going to say and continue. But if I had been doing that all my life, I think I'd be dead long ago too. So the characters discover this rock, and it's covered with 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 Hebrew writing uh, that dis explains two rules, and everything flows from two rules. The first rule is every number corresponds to two sets of previously created numbers, and furthermore, th th there's a left set and a right set. Nothing on the left is greater than or equal to anything on the right. That's the first rule. This makes a new number. The second rule describes what does it mean to be greater than or equal. So this is the number that we call zero. There's nothing on the left and nothing on the right. Here we put zero on the left and nothing on the right. And this is a number that we now call one. But on this stone that Alice and Bill discovered, it was indicated by a, a vertical line. And, and if we put zero on the right and and nothing on the left, then we get something that on the stone was indicated by a horizontal line. Now, this sort of day zero is when, when we got the number zero. The next day, we got the number one. We we'll call it day one. On day two, uh, now we can have a set of numbers, so, so we can put zero and one on the left and nothing on the right, for example. And this is actually turned out to be two and or, or we could put zero on the left and one on the right this is the number that turns out is going to be one half but now there was there was a classical definition of real numbers but by Dedekind called Dedekind cuts you have a set of rational numbers on the left and a set of rational numbers on the right that defines a, a cut be between the two and that gives real numbers so so it's it, it Conway's genius was that keep on going and allow besides rational numbers to allow any set of serial numbers a after I get to a point where I have zero uh, and and one let me put a comma here and, and one and two let's call it and, and, and you get all of these here, but nothing on the right. This is infinity. Th then we find out what, what is infinity plus one. And, and, I, and that turns out, actually, you got an infinity here. <laughs> these rules might have been invented before Dedekind rules, and that everybody for 100 years had learned about this in school, and, and we we'd considered that this is the way numbers are. Then physicists would have said that this is actually part of the real universe, that these numbers aren't strange, but that, that these are basic. And, and people probably would have discovered the real numbers as a, as, as a special subset of the serial numbers. There's no reason for us to think that the universe uh, obeys the, the laws of real numbers. People used to think that uh, that the real world had Euclidean geometry, but now people know that space bends. The patterns that are revealed here are as mind-boggling as anything in mathematics and are, are far from being explored. Every year more and more converts uh, come along and, and we find people winning prizes because they've advanced the theory of serial number. Which is a subtle point. So, you know, I, I, I'd lost the napkin, but the, uh, it turned out that uh, the rule that I gave in my first draft during those six days was not his rule, actually, but it was, it was subtly different. Here, for example, is Chinese translation. Don't like thinking of my impending death. Um, and, uh, you know, I haven't got all that many years left. I don't quite know how many.